And there we have it, the brand new title screen music for Battle for Azeroth. Great work, guys. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited. All we need now is an amazing login screen to go with it, and the expansion's pretty much ready to ship. Oh, really? You're not going to fix all the broken classes? No, 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 we'll do that in a patch. Yeah, great. Uh, makes sense. Well, I was playing on my shaman the other day, and something happened that suddenly gave me all these great ideas for login screens, so I drew up some ideas. Oh, hey, that sounds great. Let's have a look. Okay, well, first, how about... The Gates of Stromgard. Uh, I mean, I like it, I like it, but it's a little bit obvious. And anyway, people are going to be sick of Stromgard by 8.1. Uh, fair point. How about Scary Old God Tentacles? Oh, you know, I like that a lot better, but you're forgetting, Josh, that Battle for Azeroth is an expansion about the faction war. There are no Old Gods in Battle for Azeroth. But I like Scary, though. Uh, do you have any more Scary? No, no, that that's too scary. Uh, but I like the character close-up. We haven't done that since Cataclysm. Oh, well, good, great. Well, I've got more characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure we should give away the final boss in the login screen, though. Fair enough. Well, then I'm afraid I'm all out of ideas. Mm. It's so hard to think of something that doesn't blatantly favor one faction over the other, you know? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. Are you serious? Yeah, what's not to love? It's dramatic, it's beautiful, it's weirdly even more beautiful when he cries. It's perfect! Don't you think some people might think it's a bit alliance biased? Josh, it's just a beautiful angel faced man crying and being good and just and kind and pure and in battle against an unspeakable evil. What's even slightly biased about that? Okay, great, let's put this baby on the PTR and get started on classic! Really? No, obviously, we're gonna make blood trolls into an allied race, come on. Knowledge is power. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another wondrous wisdom show, where it has been a week of questions and answers. Some of those answers may have been confusing, some of those answers may have been flat out wrong, and still more are still tantalizingly out of reach. So join us here on the very cusp of the new expansion as we peer down into the churning precipice of Battle for Azeroth news. And in an expansion which appears to be placing the strength of narrative and the ways that narrative is delivered at the very center of the player's experience, who better to get us started today than our favorite storytellers, Christy Golden, Terran Gregory, and senior narrative designer Steve Danusa, Danusa, Danus, Danusa, who popped into E3 this week to talk about that exact subject. Uh, we're not going to linger long on this panel because there wasn't much in the way of new information, rather it was just a thoroughly enjoyable few minutes to hear these guys all together talking about their craft, especially as interviewing them was the voice of McCree himself, Matt Mercer. And it's obvious why they chose Matt Mercer, it's because he's probably the most famous D&D dungeon master in the world right now. So narrative in a game setting is pretty much his thing. But basically, and I think I speak for everyone here, please can we just have Matt Mercer do all Blizzard interviews from now on, please? At any convention, for any topic, because, oh man, he is just so great. And actually, I say there wasn't any new information, but there was this tantalizing little morsel. There is more content that will be coming out soon that will ramp up to the launch. Um, some of it we have not talked about yet, but it's really exciting. There's some surprises waiting for you. Uh, what surprises now. would those be, Taryn? Between good, now and launch day. Good surprises. <laughs> some stuff that we've uh, we've never tried before, so it's really, really exciting. Okay, what new never done before thing are you talking about, team? Matt Mercer, why did you just accept that? Why didn't you press them further? God damn it, Mercer, you call yourself an interviewer? Where's the pressure? Make them tell you about the new never done before thing, Mercer, you amateur. Okay, I've changed my mind. He blew it. No more interviews from McCree. But that's just the start, because also in E3, production director John Height appeared on an IGN stream talking about all things BFA and said this. Uh, Blood Trolls are, are pretty cool looking group. Uh, don't be surprised if you, you don't see uh, the opportunity to play as a Blood Troll at some point. Yes, you heard right. John Height there basically just appearing to confirm Blood Trolls as an allied race, which as you can imagine the community paid barely any attention to at all in between going absolutely nuts about the newest, reddest, and least dressed addition to the allied race roster, because who wouldn't want to be this hot and this scary? Exactly. But the thing is, you know when you say something that you really shouldn't have said? I mean, we've all been there, we're talking perfectly normally, and suddenly your mouth just says something wrong, and says words that are just bad, and it's clearly not what you meant to say, but it will still land you in trouble. Like, 
accidentally calling your girlfriend mum or dad. We've all been there, right? Right? Well, that's apparently what happened here, as no less than game director Ian Hazakostis himself moved into shit on all our fun and clear up the confusion. Because yes, joy of joys, this week also saw a live developer Q&A with Ian and Law. And this was the very first question Ian answered and confirmed actually that it was all a mistake and that blood trolls are not going to be an allied race because John Height just done goofed. And that's why Ian is the boss, you know, because he's the kind of guy that can step in and clean up other people's mess. When someone else says something just bad and wrong, Ian is the man to sort it out. You would never catch Ian saying something that sounds just terrible. Blood trolls are bad dudes. Okay. They're, they're pretty black. We're going to kill them. Let's move on. And do you remember when I said the story panel was just the start? Well, I lied because actually all this blood trolls nonsense was just the start because there is plenty more to be getting on with the Q&A, as there always is. And that's what I love about the Q&As recently. You know where you are with them. You know Lore is going to just forget how to read when it comes to someone's name. Uh, next question from... I'm gonna say Drake the 90. You know there's gonna be a question about Pathfinder, which will get the same answer as always. Yes. And yet still cause havoc on the forums. And you know that the Q&A itself probably coincides with a BFA announcement or launch of some sort. And in this case, it was that the whole of Battle for Azeroth's pre-patch is now on the PTR. It's there to test right now as we speak for everyone because this isn't like beta. Now, at the time of writing, that's actually a complete lie because there's not all of the pre-patch at all. In fact, there's not actually much content to test on there. There's no Lordron or Teldrassil scenarios, which is really annoying because I'm not being funny, Blizz, but I need to know what happens to that tree and it's still nowhere to be seen. But there is, of course, the current class and global cooldown changes so you can see where your characters are at. There's the stat squish, there's war mode, and finally, at last, the very short scenario that sees us give up our artifacts, which I'm not going to spoil audibly, but I am going to show on screen right now. So if you don't want to see it, just look away or minimize for a second. It is very short, but it does at least give a satisfactory reason why you may want to give up one of the most powerful weapons on the planet to make way for your new Kul Tiran shit sword in BFA. Plus, and I know we keep banging on about this, but it's one of those real-time in-game cutscenes that shows your actual in-game character being badass, and you know I love those, so I'm probably quite an easy sell. Oh, and just as a side note, but remember your character will be shown in this cutscene using whatever weapon transmog you have equipped, which, if you plan ahead, can make for some pretty epic screen caps. Just something you might want to think about. But there's still, oh sorry, it's safe to look again now, there's still plenty more of interest in the Q&A to summarise about stuff people really want to know about, like class changes. Those that have been following developments on the beta recently have noticed that Blizz have just done a massive overhaul of some specs, which at this late stage is pretty unexpected to be honest. Usually Blizz would just be getting into the numbers tuning bit by now. We'd put out our hilarious and informative class guides to worldwide critical acclaim, everyone would reroll Warlock as usual, and that would be that. But no, this week some of the specs people are most worried about, Fury and Balance, have been quite heavily reworked, and to be fair, our are in a much better state than they were. But here, Ian confirmed that the window for such big changes is rapidly closing, and actually now it really will be numbers tuning over any really impactful rethinks. So those other specs that are getting players sweating, like Shadow Priest or your Shaman DPS, they're gonna have to wait for a patch once the expansion is up and running. Which is good news for makers of gameplay guides who may want to get those things ready before, I don't know, they have to take time out for a wedding or something, but probably not such great news for priests and shaman. It could be argued here that Ian is admitting they are shipping an incomplete product. But then of course it could also be argued, when has World of Warcraft ever been complete? And anyway, Shaman, come on, you're used to being terrible, aren't you, right? And some really exciting Mythic Plus news too. First off, Battle for Azeroth will have Mythic Plus seasons, which will feature a unique affix that will be in place in every dungeon you tackle throughout the duration of that season. So, for example, the first affix is Infested, where some non-boss mobs will be carrying a parasite, which buffs that mob. But when you damage the mob, the parasite makes a run for it to another mob, but you can kill it before it gets there. I think it's a really neat idea, having one set of fixes which changes every few months and which Blizz say will be appropriate to the current content in the game. So the parasite is connected to the final boss of Uldir, Gahun. Presumably by the time we get to the end of the expansion, the affix will be something like Sylvanas's morally grey debuff of the void, something like that. And the other big news concerning Mythic Plus is the confirmation of something that people have already been noticing on the beta. Players can no longer swap out gear pieces in a Mythic Plus dungeon once it has started. And this is pretty common practice at the higher levels of play with players using macros to switch between, say, A 
AoE stats or legendaries for trash and single target for bosses, or damage mitigation when you know you're going to need it, that sort of thing. With that not possible in BFA, you're going to have to make a gear decision before you start the run and stick to it, which is going to add a new level of thought and planning when it comes to you personally, but also overall group composition. A challenge that was met with relish on the forums, who appreciated that not only does this change make gear choices for Mythic Plus runs more meaningful and important, but an added bonus is that as a viewer it will be much easier to watch Mythic Plus too, and everyone was keen to congratulate Blizz on the double win for esports and general- no, it was a shit show, obviously. This is 100% a horrible change. This angers me in every way possible. Why are you trying to ruin the game? How to destroy everything that keeps the fun alive. Thank you for disappointing once again. Yeah, just keep ruining the game, you sucking rock hards. And look, I have to admit, I was quite lazy this week. I didn't even need to go all the way to the official forums because these comments were all replies to Wowhead's tweet about the change. People do not like it, which I can understand. I get how people would find optimizing their gear for specific moments within a dungeon immensely satisfying. And let's be honest, macros are fun. Macros are always fun. Honestly, since legendaries won't be a thing in BFA, then that's most of the gear switching gone to begin with. And for those pushing the very highest keys, it means a moment's thought about the overall composition and gear choices of the group. But I'm not saying you're wrong for hating the change if you do hate it though, because to be honest, I've never never once switched out gear mid Mythic Plus, because seriously, have you seen my transmog? When you look this good, it's going to take way more than any dungeon can throw at me to make me change, you know? It's like having a Ferrari and putting tracks on it just because you need to go up a hill. And thus ends our Q&A coverage. And look, internet, I didn't even make a single joke about Law forgetting to turn his microphone on at the beginning. Hey Josh, yeah, pleasure as always. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a lot of really, really great questions. There was a really lovely Dev Water Cooler post about WoW Classic this week, I know, which gave us an update on the team's progress and some really great insights into the decisions they're making, the problems that they're encountering, and the solutions they're finding. The most important news is that we now know what version of Vanilla we'll be getting. Patch 1.12, The Drums of War. This was the last major patch before the Brunin Crusade, when Vanilla was almost two years old. This is an obvious choice, I guess, because it does represent the most complete version of Vanilla WoW, with all the raids open and all other features in place. Of course, the romantic in me is disappointed that stepping into Classic for the first time won't be a recreation of the World of Warcraft Day 1 experience, and there were plenty of players hoping that Blizz would start from that very first iteration and open up different patches on a time frame similar to the original, with Classic finally arriving at 1.12 after a couple of years. But come on, realistically that was never gonna happen, was it? There's like five people or something on this team, they work in an old office on the other side of town, the electricity is on a meter, there's no toilet. Honestly, these guys are heroes, but they're going to be making one version of vanilla, so it might as well be the one with everything in it, right? The rest of this post is an almost touchingly geeky description of how they're going to make the game work within modern architecture. It's actually genuinely very sweet. This is a team whose heart is in the right place, and I feel very reassured that they will be doing everything they can to give us the pure classic we all want so bad. Badly. You're never going to please everyone though, and there are already rumblings about some of the phrasing here. It's going to have Battle.net integration, obviously, but that doesn't mean anything. I didn't play Bloodlines on Steam first time around, but I do now, and it's still the useless, wonderful, buggy piece of shit it was back then. Being on a modern launcher doesn't change it in any way just because sometimes friends can message me. Using modern anti-cheat code isn't going to ruin the vanilla experience, having a game which doesn't crash all the time isn't going to ruin the vanilla experience, and none of those things mean there's going to be new mounts or transmogs or a cash shop either. If you're someone who cares enough about Classic to get really upset about it, then please, go and read the post because I think it's going to make you feel a whole lot better. But back to the here and now. This week, before the storm was released, Christy Golden's new novel is, in our opinion at least, the best of any of the Warcraft books to date, telling a story that is not only generous and thoughtful in its characterizations of big lore characters, but also in the way it deals with smaller, more personal, less world-changing events too. Also great to see is how events in that book will be represented in-game when it comes to Battle for Azeroth too. If you finish the book, you'll know exactly what these are, and where they are, and why they are, and it's actually something we hoped they would add when we made our video discussing the novel, so we're especially pleased to see it happen. The audio version of the novel is even narrated by Josh Keaton, aka Anduin Rin himself, apparently. I mean, I don't know, because I live in the UK where Audible doesn't have any of the rights to any of the latest Warcraft books, so I'm taking that totally on trust. But I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. Unlike my Audible UK account, which doesn't sound like anything because it's totally silent because there's no new Warcraft book in it. But 
Bravo Christy Golden and Bravo Blizz. Boo, Audible UK. And lastly this week, Before the Storm was released. As well as being the name of the book, Before the Storm is the official title of the new, well, I guess it's the login music, isn't it? But that doesn't sound right to me. Before the Storm is most definitely an overture, but Whatever. The opening bars are the single piece of music you will listen to the most over the next two years. When you log in, when you switch to an alt, when the game disconnects you from the server. You're gonna hear this every time you interact with the game pretty much, so you want it to be good. And, well, actually Before the Storm is really interesting because, you know, Call to Arms, the really famous World of Warcraft theme that has greeted players at every single login screen in the history of World of Warcraft. Yeah, that's not really there. I mean, it kind of is, but before it can really land, we go straight into Anduin's theme, and then before we have time to really take that in, we get some Sylvanas, and that's why I'm okay with it. This isn't breaking the norm just for the sake of it. There's a narrative purpose to the choices being made here. In fact, the whole first three minutes are just crazy leitmotifs crashing into each other, which some have criticized for being too busy, but for me, it really gives the sense of the different allies and races that will be fighting the war, lining up side by side before the battle begins. It quiets down and has its more reflective moments later on, as you'd imagine, before almost fading out on a very spooky, almost old god vibe. Which is weird, because as we all know, there are no old gods in battle for Azeroth, right? My own personal favorite overture is still Warlords of Draenor, but this is a suitably grand effort. And in City of Gold and Freehold, BFA has some truly memorable themes here to enjoy. Especially City of Gold, which is totally like an Ulduargo's Inca masterpiece. That shit is ridiculous. I love it. You are, out of the two of us, the official music officiando. Yeah, so I haven't... I really liked it the first time I heard it. The second time I listened to it, I was like, okay, I can kind of see where some people are coming from, you know, who think that, you know, it's not flat, but it's like not as, doesn't have a whole range of dynamics as as Wad did. Yeah. And it kind of made me sad because I was like, oh, that beginning call to arms isn't there. And maybe this means that we're in a different, well, do you know something's what I think, happening that's do you know different. My, do you know my theory about Call to Arms? Because Call to Arms is the, you know, um, dum -ba 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 -ba. The, the, the Warcraft music, right? The World of Warcraft music. Yeah. And it's kind of like, like it's the suggestion of it is there and yeah. the cool string under bit is still mm -hmm. there. But mm -hmm. the actual kind of like brass theme itself isn't there. Yeah. And my theory is that this is a bit of a James Bond Casino Royale situation. Oh. Okay. Do you remember in Casino Royale where they, uh, it was like the reboot yes. with, um, uh, Daniel Craig, and they mm -hmm. purposely didn't have the proper James Bond fanfare. The da -da 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 -da. Right. That wasn't in the entire movie until right at the very end, when he kind of like stepped, and he was wearing a Sean Connery suit, and he and he says right. the name's Bond, James Bond, and that You're right like, at the oh. very last, it goes ba da ba ba da ba, and I feel that's what they're doing with BFA. Yeah. I feel like they're purposely going, oh no, like the actual world of mm -hmm. Warcraft is being forgotten here yeah. because the two sides are focusing so much on fighting each other because that's what happens. It goes, it mm -hmm. sounds like it's gonna go into the World of Warcraft theme, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It goes into the themes of the two leaders instead. Mm -hmm. The actual world mm -hmm. is taking second place to the protagonists yeah. and the, the two different sides. Yeah. And then I think later on in the expansion when the world, Azeroth itself, suddenly becomes more important again, yeah. Boom! That's going to become a major part of the actual world music. Anyway. Very, very confusing moment when I was talking about that on Twitter, where I thought for a second, because I was discussing it with uh, Belly Lar, mm -hmm. um, where I there was a little misunderstanding, and I thought he hated Casino Royale, and I thought that Quantum of Solace was his favourite movie. He, he, and I was like, Bell, no. I know you're funny now, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> There's no laughing at that. No. It turned, no, no, I don't want to spread the rumour that Quantum of Solace is Belly Lar's favourite James Bond movie. It's not. Quantum God. of Solace is Belly Lar's favourite James Bond movie. <laughs> is the lie that I don't want spread around. Oh. Okay? So if you hear Quantum of Solace is Belly Lar's favourite James Bond movie, don't spread that round. Don't tweet that. Mm -hmm. Quantum of Solace is mm -hmm. Belly Lar's favourite James Bond movie. Who would even say that? <laughs> I don't know. We are going to play out today with another little collection of our caption competition. Yay! 
Yeah. Our second caption competition. I'm going to show you a random collection of the winners right at the very end here um, uh, with the chosen picture as well. Thank you for the laughs, guys. It's absolutely amazing. Hope the winners are enjoying their beta keys. Indeed. If you like this episode, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who uh, give their actual real life money they to do. make these videos happen. And genuinely, what with the wedding and everything and all of the nonsense going oh, on God, everywhere yeah. with that, we, we wouldn't be making this video right now no. if it wasn't for the patrons' help. So thank you, guys. You are the best. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Kaif. Quantum of Solace is Kaif's favourite James Bond movie. <laughs> Why are you doing this to people? Why? Because What makes you want to do this It's to not people? my fault. I, know, I didn't watch the movie. I, I'm not the one that made it my... I hate that movie. I think it's terrible. Which is why it was so surprising when I found out that Kaif and Belila have an <laughs> I Love Quantum of Solace club that they go to every single week. And they wear I Love Quantum of Solace t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And they love it so much. Mm -hmm. And they sing the theme tune. <laughs> That I don't even know because I hate that movie so much. <laughs> I don't know. Ask Kaif or Bellilar. It's their favourite movie. They've got tattoos saying how much they love that movie. <laughs> Bellilar's got a tattoo of a Quantum of Solace on one arm yeah. and his analytics on the other. <laughs> uh, from me, Taliesin. And me, Evertel. Until next time. Cheerio. <laughs>